You're very welcome, everybody, to uh, to this event. This uh, today is a co-hosted event between two European networks. We've got the um, this is the ninth event of the uh, the urban community, um, where this is a community conversation, um, and it's also today uh, the 23rd uh, communities for future session. So this day we're bringing two communities to practice communities of practice together. Uh, and we're going to hear uh, about the Dutch tiny house experiments in building sustainable and just communities. And our special guest today is Mika Elzen Elzenga. If you want to give us a little wave there, Mika. Um, so thank you very much for coming. We're going to hear about your, your projects in the Haste Mar Umbacht uh, area in Kodijk in the Netherlands. Um, so just so people know, so Mika... Mika is a social entrepreneur since 1982 in the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. She's worked in several organizations for welfare and healthcare in operations staff and management. She likes to create new services and products that support people to be active in the regeneration of our planet and in personal development. With her organization, Liberta, Liberta Care Foundation, she supported Dutch youngsters involved in criminality with time out projects uh, and later collaborated with young refugees in the Netherlands. Libertera's integral concept is of eco-communities which support authorities around issues like climate change and bio-based buildings. Mika is currently the co-president of Ecolise, the European Network for Community-Led Initiatives on Climate Change and Sustainability. So um, thanks very much, Mika. We're looking forward to hearing um, about your, your adventures in developing communities. Um, but just to let people know uh, the kind of format for this event today. So it's going to be an hour long. Um, so we'll normally we have somebody make a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, but Mika, ever uh, as creative and imaginative, has actually made a special video. So I'm going to share the link with 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 people so they can watch the video on their own system at home. Um, so we will all watch it at the same time. It's about 13, 15 minutes, uh, and then after that video, we're going to have a conversation. So we'll <clears throat> we'll. Um, I'll start off with just a few leading questions and then we'll open it up and have a conversation with whoever's here and whatever people feel like discussing. So um, just going to share some of the links for um, so people have an idea of these projects. So sorry now. OK. So there should be the links there to both both of the groups, the urban community and also communities for future, and also some of the links to Mika. So just a little bit about uh, these two different projects. First of all, the uh, urban community started off as an academic project from 2019 to 21. Uh, I was part of that project working with Foucault. Uh, and at the end of that project, it got a second stage, which worked with nine uh, small experimenting groups, some municipalities and some more community-led initiatives from around Europe. And that was thanks to uh, funding from the Bosch Foundation. Um, so that kind of year and a half long journey is coming to an end. But part of this project has been trying to develop a community practice. And you'll see the link in there. And that's basically a space on LinkedIn. I think we've about 400 different people there. And that's a space to allow people to come together and share ideas, and questions, understanding about the theme of sustainable and just cities. So a community practice, anybody can be part of this. So regardless if you're official, if you're an organized group or not, uh, it's a place to come together, support each other and try to help everybody go forward in that journey. Um, the second group, uh, the Communities for Future, this is the action platform from the Ecolese Network. This is going since two, uh, 2020, so during those tough times of COVID. Um, and this is a series of, of, um, of sessions, of public sessions, again, trying to create a community practice around the theme of uh, uh, an eco-social just transition. So this is coming from Ecolese, which is a network of networks, including the Eco Village Network, Permaculture Groups, transi Transition Towns, and many other kind of specialized groups. We're about 50 groups around uh, around Europe coming together uh, and trying to find out how to support each other and move better and also make uh, policy change. So that's something we're working on. If you're interested in that, we also have a um, an online space just on Facebook, uh, and we have a series of events and resources on our webpage, which you can find the link in the chat. So um, 
that's there for people. It's open to anybody who wants to get involved. You don't have to be part of any group, but if you are, um, all the better, and you can bring the group along. So today's group, today's project, um, speaking with Mika, um, I'm just, I'm going to pass over to, uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to invite Mika, say hello, say a few words, and then I'll share the link and uh, and we'll go over to the video. So Mika, over to you and thank you very much. Duncan well for your presence here today. <laughs> thank you, Duncan. It's always uh, nice to hear people speaking Dutch. Yeah, uh, so uh, thank you for the invitation, Duncan, uh, to present in this uh, Urbana project. Uh, Urbana is about uh, mostly uh, projects uh, who are in cities, and I'm really happy to to show you something about Libertera, about uh, in the countryside, how this can connect to villages. So, yeah, and I'm happy you're here. And uh, yeah, like Duncan said, we will watch a video first, and then uh, we can uh, talk together. And uh, yeah, looking forward for your questions and uh, ideas. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you very much, Mika. So I've shared the link into the vid, into the chat there. So it's about, I think, 13, 15 minutes long. So I'm going to pause the recording. People can watch it at home. And then when you finish watching, we'll return here and then we'll engage in, in the conversation. OK, so see you back in a, in a few minutes. Back to the recording. So, uh, so wow, Mika, whoa, <laughs> beautiful. That was really, really something else. Uh, an amazing, well, an amazing project and an amazing little short video to capture the magic of your of your your work there. Um, so, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna ask you just a few questions, and we'll take this up to about the next five ten minutes, and then the last half an hour we'll we'll open it up to the to the rest of the community here. So, um, so I'm just going to ask you three questions. So, one kind of more local on um, this place, which is hard to name, Asmar Umbat. Uh, then the second, more global, more at the actual project and the other projects you've worked on, uh, and then more about the kind of the, the the relationship with the council and actually developing discussions of if you know how can we enable change. So, first of all, so. So in your project, you talked about the, the development goals, the climate goals, you've got the food forests. Uh, so what sort of what sort of vision do you have for the future of, of your area at the different scales? Yeah, thank you, Duncan. Yeah, what is uh, important is to know that when we want to make the change, we don't have to point to politicians or to other people, but we have to do it ourselves. I think that is the main message, I always say. Uh, and uh, I was uh, on a certain moment in a, in a shop and there, uh, there was a television uh, uh, recording there and they asked me, Will the change come from big companies or politicians or from, uh, from, from citizens? And then I said, the change is always about us. And when we will create uh, places with solar panels and uh, uh, take care of our own electricity, other people will follow. And when uh, there are a lot of people with small projects, in the end, it's a big one. So what for me is uh, very important is not to feel uh, that, that you can't do anything yourself. For me, also Libertera is a showcase that, uh, that that you can create yourself with a few people sometimes. And every journey starts with the first step. So uh, take the first step is my, my uh, advice. And uh, don't think uh, that it needs to be uh, with a great, great vision. Of course, I have a great, uh, a big vision, <laughs> but with a small vision, you also can start. Very good. Well, like that, they say you now that the the first step is the hardest step, and if if that's your first step already, it's uh, already a lot of magic in there. So so uh, some congratulations on that. So um, a little bit more about actual Libertera and, and some of the the other projects you, which have worked it in other parts of the Netherlands. So uh, especially in Urbana, we're very much focused on on the on the sustainable, but also the social just side of things and how we can 
build communities or how we can engage in processes to bring in different sorts of people, listen to each other, um, respect each other's diversity, I suppose, but then work together towards a greater change. So you've already mentioned a little bit of some of the diverse groups you've worked at. Um, but what have been some of the key learnings that you, your project has found uh, in regard to social justice and the integration of diverse groups in the Netherlands? Yeah, what I already told is that I'm a, a social entrepreneur. And what I see is that when you have money, uh, it's not so hard to be sustainable and to create a better life. But when you're uh, not in this uh, very good circumstances, yeah, we need to create in another way. And for me, that was, uh, was the, the main reason that I thought, okay, when I work with young refugees from Syria and Eritrea who came here without their parents and were uh, uh, around 18 when they, they came here, I thought, yeah, they really, really need uh, more support to, to, to find their way in, uh, in society. So for me, social justice is really about uh, make it possible not only for the happy view, but make it possible for for people uh, who, who who have less uh, possibilities than um, than people with with a lot of money. And what I see is that in the Netherlands, uh, a lot of municipalities are struggling with how to support these groups, and not by creating projects for them, but for me, it's important to create projects with them. And what's a pity in, in Geest Marambacht, the place I'm now, is that this municipality here said, yeah, we are interested in sustainability and education about it, but we have enough projects for refugees already, so uh, we don't uh, have money available for refugees. But uh, in my next project, I, uh, I will do that uh, again. And uh, what for me was important is to create a showcase in a place so that other municipalities and uh, groups can be inspired. That's, that's really important. When you really want to make a change, you have to make a showcase so people can really have the experience that it's possible in another way. Uh, I'm also involved in the Netherlands in, we call it Erfdelen. Uh, it's called that you share the farmyard together. But often I see that then they build for uh, tons and tons. So only for people who have very high incomes. And for me, it was really important to show that with tiny houses in a temporary way, uh, you can uh, can create a place that's available for a lot more people. And uh, that's what for me uh, in my work uh, is, uh, is, uh, is really important. That's great, that's great. Um, so in, especially again in, in the Urbana project, a lot of the, the focus has been, how do you get like the, the top level of municipalities, mayors, governments at all the different scales, how do you get these people to listen to these people down below who are on the ground, who are working in communities, some of them organized, some of them not even organized, just informal groups. So how, how these groups can better uh, talk together, listen to each other, and then identify means of moving forward. I think that's a, it's a, it's a key challenge and a lot of time has already explored those. So, uh, but you, when you talk about your project, you 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 talk about the fact that you were able to just go to the municipality and ask them what what do they need, and that that's how it led to the the project getting formed. So, can you just tell us a little bit more about about that journey, how it came about in the first place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an interesting journey, and uh, uh, what I realized when I talked with the mayor is that he was really surprised that I offered him what can I do for him or for the community and the, and, and the municipality. Because his first reaction was, oh, I have to think about it, what I need as, uh, as, as a major, because we are more common to be in contact with citizens when they need money or they have problems uh, and uh, with the municipality because we don't act well and they are angry and uh, so for, for them, it was really interesting to hear a, an offer of a, a citizen and a group of citizens. So uh, I think the, this is the, the magic. 
not to ask only, but also uh, find the connection and to look for the cooperation. Because uh, my motto is always uh, in Dutch, samen kunnen we alles, together we can everything. And, uh, and we have different roles uh, because uh, they are responsible for using the land and in, in, in with all kinds of rules and uh, because every piece of land has its own destination. And for citizens, it's really important to live in a healthy and a happy uh, environment. So what's really important is to, to, to have a look, not what we are different in, but what are our common needs and how we can support each other to make this world a better place. And now I say it right in the first sentence. So we need each other and uh, we are all people. And uh, yeah, I think we, we can really create when we use our knowledge, talents and so on uh, and, uh, and uh, not fight, but co-create. And what for me is really important is not to fight and not to say this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, but to say, okay, I uh, have other ideas. Can we do it in this way? So we have a pilot or a showcase so uh, we can inspire others. That was really important. Lovely, 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 Mika. Um, okay, so I we're going to open it up now. So if people have questions, um, if you want to just in, in the chat, put up like a, a, a mark or a H for hand, or if you just want to open your screen and just wave a hand, um, if you want to just say your name as well. And if you are part of anywhere or part of a project, it might, it might help as well. So hopefully we're a small little group, so please don't be shy. And again, I would encourage people to open the screens. It, it does help in the dynamic of a group, especially when we're a small little group. So don't be shy. So who's got a, a question there? I'm hoping somebody has. So if you want to just put your hand up or put a mark in the chat to let us know. No? Yep, great stuff, Rebecca. Rebecca Conway, good stuff. Over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for this. It's so interesting to me. And I think we share a lot of similarities, Mika. I'm also a social worker. Um, I practice in eco-social work. And my I'm doing a PhD, which is why I'm based in Germany at the moment, in eco-social work. But this exact way of living would be like my dream way of living. Um, so living in kind of an intentional community with eco-friendly, using eco-friendly materials and having healthy homes. Um, but I was really interested, and I don't know if I missed it in your video, about the people that live in your homes. So I think you said there are 10 of them and you obviously occupy one of them. So I'm just wondering who the other residents are, how you found them. Did you together as a group create the project and each of you occupy a home or... Um, yeah, I'd love to know just who lives there and how you kind of organize that. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca, for this question. Yeah. Um, what for me was important uh, is this kind of project can take a long time before there is a, uh, is a contract with a landowner, before there are all kinds of licenses you need uh, to develop the land. So for me, it was really important to be in contact with a landowner and to arrange all these kinds of licenses before I involve people, because uh, otherwise a lot of people are already very tired when they have to work four years on a project. And then uh, in our project, they build their own house. So we were looking for people who have the possibility to build uh, or want to build. And because it's a temporary project, uh, you don't get a mortgage for uh, this kind of, uh, of, of buildings. Uh, for me, I didn't have uh, 3 million on my bank account. So it was really important to hire the land and let people build their own place. So what I did is uh, to arrange this uh, licenses. And then I asked people, do you share the values, sustainability? Do you want to inspire other people to show that this lifestyle is open for them as well? And uh, are you open also to cooperate 
uh, with, with municipalities, with entrepreneurs, with social organizations to, uh, to show that uh, this lifestyle can be for more than uh, the happy few. So, and then I had a lot of talks with people about, okay, do you fit in these values? For me, the values were really important. And then are you able to, uh, to finance it? Yeah, it, I, I don't like this question in the start, but yeah, in the moment when you have new ideas, uh, yeah, it, it is about people who can, uh, can bring some finance with them. And when we develop more projects, my idea is also to start a housing company so that also people can rent a place instead of buying uh, and building it themselves. So, and uh, what I was uh, looking for was also a way how we can make decisions together and how we communicate. Because my experience is that a lot of communities, it's hard to start them, but mostly it's the problem that how to keep it together as a community. Because most communities are down in five years because there are conflicts, people can't uh, stand each other anymore because you live together in an intense way. So I said in the start in my business plan, in my source plan, it's wider than only business, uh, you need to, in, uh, to, 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 uh, um, to, take care of your personal development. And it's about we create sociocracy as a decision-making process. You need nonviolent communication in how we uh, communicate together because uh, uh, we all of us bring a lot of pain with us. So, and uh, sometimes in, in communication, you say it in a way that it's not so friendly for the people around. And the last years I, put also deep democracy in it. And deep democracy is about how can you act with the differences in the group and that the minority is also uh, hurt. So that's really important. So finding a group is, is really a process. In, in, uh, you, you need to meet each other for a few times and then, uh, then look, do we really fit together? And what we did is I'm the founder, so I started. I, I looked for people in my cooperation. It's a cooperation, that's the entity. Together with my now neighbor, we looked for the third one and then the one, two, three, look for the fourth one. So when you're in house number 10, <laughs> yeah, you have in the, in the commission uh, of, uh, of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we live now in our plots in 10 houses, five tiny houses and five, some bigger, with 21 people, five children, and one baby coming in August. Yeah, it sounds it sounds so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, well done, and thank you for explaining it. Yeah, and maybe it's also interesting to say uh, half of my time is in social topics. Uh, of course, you, you need a lot of uh, talks with mayors and all kinds of uh, builders and so on, but really to you have to invest in the start in um, in, in the social uh, topics. Otherwise, you can't uh, hold the community for a longer time. That's great. great. So is there any other questions? I'm hoping, again, uh, people will not be shy. I hope people have burning questions here for Mika. Yeah, great stuff, Nancy. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if you went into any problems with like the municipalities, so challenges they experience with when it comes to um, the regulations, like the stemming plan and Dutch, mm -hmm. um, and how you went about that. Yeah, that's the reason why we have a, a, a kind of office now in Libertara, really to support projects in this topic of uh, destination bestemmingsplan in, uh, in, in Dutch. Because every uh, little place has a destination and when it's agriculture, you're not allowed to build in the Netherlands. I think it's in a lot of countries the same. So when you want to change the destination from agriculture or recreation area in, in living area, it, uh, it takes a lot of uh, time, effort and uh, uh, ex uh, expertise. 
And this negotiation is also about this topic of uh, what will we bring and what will we get? When I was there and I would only say, okay, I want to build 10 houses, I was never accepted. So what was really the case was, what can I bring uh, so the mayor can uh, can uh, realize the, the, the topics in their policy, what they wanted to, to realize? And that takes time. And what I did is you can do it in two ways, or you can say, change the destination forever, or you can change the destination for a while. And in the Netherlands, there is a law now that you can change the destination for 10 years. And uh, so, uh, and that takes less money and less time. In eight weeks, they can change it in the municipality themselves. And when you're in the countryside, the province, so the region need to allow as well. And uh, that's the reason why we built tiny houses who are movable. So maybe in 10 years, we have to move them. But often you see that when the destination is changed for 10 years, that after this 10 years or after eight years, you can change the destination uh, now forever. Ne nothing is forever, but for, uh, for a longer time. But that's the biggest topic, this, this destination change. And what's really important also in this destination change is that uh, the, the value of the land. The value of land, what has the use of nature in the Netherlands is 10,000 euros a hectare. But building space is above 300,000 euros a hectare. So when you change the destination, you really have to look at, okay, it's agriculture now that's around uh, 100,000 a hectare in the Netherlands in the moment. So when you downsize it to food forest, then, and, and, or, the, or nature, you downsize it to 10,000. And when you, so what we do is to upgrade a part and to downsize it apart. And still the balance is the same. And what for me is very imp in, uh, important is that Libertera is, the, 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 the meaning of this word is free earth. For me, it's really important to have earth without speculation so that we don't want that people change it to earn a lot of money uh, uh, with it. No, it's because we need to create more space for people to live and that we have to take care of our planet. So really be in balance with biodiversity and, uh, and living. And that's the, re the reason why we say in our project, uh, we build nature inclusive and climate adaptive. These are typical words for negotiation with authorities. That's great. Uh, any more questions there? I'd say we have time for maybe two more questions. Francisco, he is telling that there is in the Netherlands some project city nomads. Maybe you can say say something about it, uh, Francisco. Yeah, please do. And, and Francisco is one of the Urbana experimenters as well, based in Rotterdam. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, Miguel, like just amazing work. I would say, like, it seems like it's a lot of uh, work that you put into uh, across many, many years. Um, so mm -hmm. the Staten Nomad, they had a presentation recently over here at the space. We had these community living sessions, and as much as they got agreement from the municipality to be located in a specific place around Nijmegen, uh, then at the same time they have to move every I don't know every four years or something, and so that might make it quite precarious, but I found it really interesting that also you were able to get a temporary agreement. Um, I feel like that's a bit of a scary thing as well. Uh, I'm not sure how you, you're gonna plan, but if you say that, uh, you know, what is temporary becomes permanent, then I guess that's just great. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit wondering as well, how do you go about setting up all the entrepreneurial offshoots uh, that seems to come out of uh, Libertera as well? Uh, if you could uh, speak a little bit about that, that would be great as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this uh, reflection, uh, Francisco. Yeah, uh, of course, it's better when you can develop a plot, not in a temporary way, but uh, for longer use. But what my experience is, uh, a friend of mine, she developed a plot 
uh, 10 years ago, and she's still in the negotiation about changing the destination plan. So, uh, and I realized this project in two years and three months. So the, the people in the region told me, Mika, when they started 10 years ago with a temporary project, they already are there. And uh, now they are still in this negotiation phase. And of course, there's a risk, but I think there will be changes in our laws. And especially in the Netherlands, uh, there are big changes coming with the Omgevingswet, the environment uh, law. Uh, that it makes it more easy to change destinations of the land because we have to involve citizens who are living in the region uh, to talk about the, the, the use of the land. So, and what for me is it really important is that, and the mayor uh, asked me as well, when we realized this, uh, this project, Mieke, uh, do me a favor and spread your knowledge to more projects. So my aim with Libertera now is to create more libertarian locations, but also to help other initiatives in the Netherlands with this uh, realizing from vision to, uh, to, to realization, because this is really a need for, and it's not only about the law, but also about this uh, uh, communication skills like sociocracy, deep democracy, and, and nonviolent communication, and everything in between. So I'm cooperating now with builders uh, with, who build with bio-based materials, I cooperate with farmers who don't have succession in the farm and also uh, to, to make the land free. That's, that's really important for me. Uh, I'm, uh, this morning I talked with a group of people about how it, it, will it, can it be possible when there are people who own land now can put this land in a cooperation so the land is free again and that a group of people who really want to take care of the land and want to live in community can be there to support it and to create more places where we can inspire more people not to focus on a lot of uh, earning money but uh, focus on uh, creating value for nature the environment and uh, each other and i'm looking forward i already make a, a copy of your link so i will have a look Thank you for sharing. So I think one quick last question, if anyone. Yeah, I'm seeing hands up. I saw Car Carlotta first there. I'm not quite sure if it's a short question since I missed the first part. Um, I'm, I'm super interested in all your inputs because we're uh, based in Germany, currently thinking about building an eco village on an area that's currently not building land. And we're trying to get the the, the city to, to allow us to build tiny houses there. It's 1.4 hectares. And we think it's stupid that it's just lying there and not being used in the middle of a residential area. But would you say that it's possible to convince the city or municipality to allow us to put it there? And if so, what tips can you give us? Yeah, yeah. Every country has its own rules and all laws. laws. So it's really important to, uh, to ad, uh, have advice of people around. And I know in, uh, in uh, Germany, uh, I worked together uh, last year with Thomas Meyer from Schloss Tondorf. And he really helps communities to start up because he knows the, the German laws. And uh, we co can cooperate when it's about uh, tiny living and to create bio-based buildings. So what we do now is, uh, and that's the reason why Ecolise have this uh, Communities for Future as well platform, is how we can, can support each other. I, uh, I work uh, with a group in, uh, in Croatia in this moment. Vishna was there a few minutes ago, but I don't see her now anymore. But what is really important in this moment is uh, that we share our knowledge and experiences so it's possible for more people. And the best tip I can give, I don't know if you heard it in the start, is uh, don't only ask for what you need, but really offer uh, what you can contribute to make the environment a better place. We're currently thinking about, like there's a lake embedded there that's not really fit for humans anyway, because it's mostly overgrown. And we thought of like creating a nature, a nature preservation area there and offer the city like usually in Germany, they have to, to pay for these areas. And if we tell them we maintain it for free, yes. that could be an incentive that they allow us to put tiny houses there. 
Yeah, what's really important is when we got the plot, it was empty. It was uh, only uh, uh, water and grass. Mm -hmm. And because we are uh, creating these buildings, we also uh, uh, uplifted the biodiversity of mm -hmm. our plot. So uh, they say, okay, it's better to, to leave it as nature. Sometimes you need another impulse. And uh, creating a food forest or creating a recreation area where you really add biodiversity, mm -hmm. uh, that's a really, really topic in the moment also for, uh, uh, for municipalities. Perfect. And when you can add also something about healthcare or about social projects with people yeah, who we are, are we not involved that. in society in the moment, yeah. that's really strong. We're thinking about a multi generational project because it's it's a That's moment great. it's it's a ba built house that doesn't really fit anyone it's like one family, and then one point four hectares of park. Yeah, yeah, and, and these kinds of <laughs> and these kind of integrated projects don't solve one problem solve uh, solve at least five problems. Mm -hmm. That is uh, that's also permaculture, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I always say the 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 challenge of one sector is the solution for another. Mm -hmm. So in I, in the moment uh, uh, I'm in a project involved as well to create uh, housing in old offices in towns, uh, offices who are empty. And how can you create? Offices with vertical farming, with roofs, with uh, with eco uh, uh, eco uh, stuff on it, so you can produce food and that you can create uh, uh, housing in a plot where uh, offices were before. So then you solve the problem of empty offices, you add housing and you add production of food and social uh, uh, topics like when you make a restaurant in the in the, in the surface. Yeah, you have social cohesion, we call it in the Netherlands, uh, as well. So create a lot of combinations. That's my uh, advice always. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. So lots of great tips there. I reckon we've just time to get Michael. I know you had a question as well there. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, th this has been really fascinating. Thanks, um, uh, Mika. And uh, let me just have a quick look. Um, yeah, so I'm actually building a, a tiny house of my own design. I work at the um, Sustainable Buildings Research Center. And so I'm having fun from an engineering background doing the sustainability issues, but to hear more about the, like your social conversations. And um, that is, is fascinating for me. Um, I think you mentioned something about deep democracy. I, I mean, I can look that up, but... Um, could you give a little bit more about that and and also about the the land ownership model that you're you're using so you're not actually owning the land you must be leasing it or something like that i will answer your question about the land owning because we have only uh, a, a few minutes left deep democracy you find a lot on the internet it's about uh, uh, taking care of the uh, the wisdom of the minority that that's the yes. and and uh, and and co-create because then you have better decision making and about yes. our ownership we have a cooperation we have this system in the netherlands so all the people who live in our plot the adults are part of the cooperation and we make the decisions uh, together and that means that uh, we are responsible together so uh, we hire the place from the recreation area uh, with the cooperation and the cooperation and all the people pays the rent to the cooperation and our common place we rent out also for groups so when we rent out a lot we can invest it uh, or in other libertarian places or invest it in our plots to buy more uh, trees fruit trees for our food forest or something like that and my uh, idea is also to um, when we grow as an organization that we can, uh, when we have uh, earned uh, more money than we need ourselves, that we can invest it in other projects, uh, like in Africa, building, uh, or creating food forests there. Or um, what's really important is that when not only to do it for ourselves, but also to uh, to make it happen for other type of projects who really create a better world. Mm. Mm. And all uh, mm. and about this building topic. 
every uh, country has its own rules about uh, what's allowed to build and uh, about energy, isolation, all kinds of uh, things. So I always advise people, don't start building your own house before you know where you will put this house so you know that it fits in the rules. Otherwise, mm. maybe uh, you, you invest a lot and uh, except when you're building uh, houses on wheels, then you can put them everywhere, but uh, uh, where it's allowed. But uh, uh, be careful by starting building houses when you're not knowing about the rules and the rules are changing also all the time, like energy rules about isolation and the quality of it. So then you invest and then uh, you can't uh, live in it. You don't get an address. And that's also important mm. when people want to live yeah. somewhere. Lovely. So Mika, uh, we're going to have to finish up. I, I think we could go on for a lot more uh, time here. <laughs> um, but just to finish up, you're talking there about the rules, and yeah, rules do change you now, especially when people get organized and can push for things and dealing with the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis. So there's a need for people to get more engaged. So if people might be interested in like, you know, what's the next step? How, how can people get involved locally to become part of the solution globally? Yeah, what's really important is uh, often the plans are coming from authorities. Then, And when they involve people, they call it participation participation when the authorities create and you can reflect on but the best is to create your own projects and ask them uh, uh, to cooperate because we with our community-led initiatives we really make the change so uh, what my advice is always take your citizen leadership it's it's not about waiting till oh is it allowed is it allowed no when you see that you want to make steps to create a better world, do it and, uh, uh, and, and create it with a few people, not a big group of 20, then you can't uh, get a vision and a mission and a just a little group. Ask authorities if they are interested in it. Is it need not your municipality go next door? Because the mayor there can be interested uh, because they are more modern. <laughs> I say, so don't fight, don't fight, but offer. And when they agree, they agree. And when they don't want, it's not their time. Mm. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, Mika, um, I hope this is inspired. We're only a small little group today, um, but that's fine. The, the right people, are, the people that turn up are the right people. That's the way <laughs> we roll. Um, but it's been really inspirational. I hope it's I know there's this is quite a, a strange grouping. I think there's different people have come from different worlds. So maybe if we can build on those connections and and I've put the links into the chat there for the different communities of practice for the Urbana and the communities for future. So if you want to get involved, don't be shy, plug in, look for resources, ask questions, share what knowledge you have, and let's try to support and uh, and help each other move forward uh, together. No. Um, so. I just want to thank you uh, for turning up today, everybody. I want to thank you very much, Mika, for sharing the magic and not just giving us a nice little presentation, the lovely little video, uh, but just doing what you do and especially the way that you do it. Uh, I think there's something so powerful about just having that that human warmth and uh, and addressing these challenges with creativity, with passion, uh, and the idea that that's what we want. That's what we're going to make and then doing. It. So um, I hope we can all just if people want to open our mics or just give open your screens and just give a little thanks to Mika. And uh, hopefully this is just the first step for all of us to move forward together. So thank you very much, Mika. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> and uh, hopefully see you soon. We have another chat now in a few weeks, another Communities for Future. And if somebody wants to do one of the Urbana chats, there's links in there. Send us an email if you want to lead one of these moments to share your work, your projects as well. So it's on the air. It's two o'clock. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Mika. And best luck in your projects um, wherever you are. So, ciao okay. from Lisbon. Thanks for organizing, Duncan. <laughs>